It's fast, loud, and can deliver tanks, troops, and supplies straight onto a hostile beach without a single port in sight. The Landing Craft Air Cushion, or LCAC, is the U.S. Navy's high-speed solution for amphibious assault, hovering on a cushion of air at over 40 knots. Since the 1980s, this futuristic-looking craft has transformed how the military moves heavy gear from ship to shore. Bridging the gap between sea power and ground combat like no other vessel in the world. The idea of an air cushion vehicle, or ACV, originated in the 1950s with British inventor Christopher Cockerell. By the 1970s, the U.S. Navy began developing its own hovercraft, designed specifically to support amphibious assault missions. Measuring over 87 feet long and nearly 48 feet wide, can carry up to 75 tons at speeds between 40 and 60 knots Uh, it's a hovercraft. We have engines that turn lift fans. They uh, force air underneath the boat. The black bag underneath it holds all the air and it actually pushes up off, up, us up off the ground. And then we, uh, we go around us like a the equivalent of an air hockey table, the hockey puck on an air hockey table. You bump it a little, it just keeps right on going. LCACs are launched from the well decks of amphibious assault ships, such as WASP-class landing helicopter docks, or LHDs. Once ordered, the air cushions inflate beneath the hull, lifting the vessel just moments before departure. Inside the well deck, operations are coordinated by the well deck master, who manages timing and safety. From a control station within the ship's superstructure, the well deck master oversees the sequence using color-coded crew, radios, and hand signals. With its skirt fully inflated, the LCAC hovers above the deck. slides over the edge and heads for the open sea, driven by four powerful gas turbine engines. Each LCAC is operated by a compact crew of five, including a craft master, engineer, navigator, and two deck crew members working in tight coordination to handle both sea and shore operations. LCAC crews receive specialized training in simulators and aboard live craft to execute precision landings, operate under combat conditions, and maintain control in unpredictable environments. LCAC crews master advanced maneuvers that enable rapid, seamless transitions from open ocean to hostile beaches navigating sharp turns, sudden stops, and tight landings under intense pressure and unpredictable conditions. As the LCAC nears land, it transitions from open water to ground effect, where its air cushion becomes compressed between the skirt and beach surface.
Each landing zone, or LZs, is controlled by a Landing Signal Officer, or LSO, assigned by Beach Master Units, or Landing Shore Parties. Using radios and visual signals, the LSO guides the LCAC to the designated drop zone for unloading. This process is crucial, as most beaches lack obvious landmarks for the LCAC crew to navigate by. Once on site, loadmasters coordinate the offload of cargo which may include troops, vehicles, and heavy artillery. Hydraulic systems lower the LCAC's loading ramp, allowing cargo to roll directly onto the beach. Every second counts. Rapid unloading is key to minimizing time spent in vulnerable coastal areas. But LCACs aren't limited to traditional well-deck launches. The U.S. Navy also deploys them from Expeditionary Transfer Dock Ships, or ESDs, mobile logistics platforms. These ships can partially submerge their decks creating a temporary dock for LCACs, allied vessels, and lighter craft. That means cargo transfers can happen at sea without needing a port or calm seas. It's a capability that allows large-scale equipment to move seamlessly between ships and landing craft in any environment. and it's especially valuable when working with allied navies, like those of Australia or New Zealand, whose platforms may not align with U.S. systems. While the LCAC revolutionized ship-to-shore logistics, the next-generation ultra-heavy lift amphibious connector, or UHAC, aims to carry even heavier payloads across harsher terrain with even greater versatility. The UHAC was engineered to practically walk on water, leveraging massive air-filled foam tracks in prototype tests during RIMPAC 2014. the half-scale UHAC demonstrator glided across surf and soft terrain with remarkable ease and extremely low ground pressure, about 1 PSI compared to nearly 10 PSI for an AAV. Uh, the UHAC, as you can see behind me, uh, is a unique vehicle. We brought it out, uh, it's an experimental uh, concept demonstrator. Uh, what's unique about it, you can see it has foamed cushion uh, tracks that it rides, rides on to cross the water and to cross uh, the beach zone. So what that allows it to do is to cross terrain that you wouldn't normally be able to get uh, traditional or, or existing vehicles such as an LCAC across. The U-Hack was designed to carry up to 150 tons, or 190 tons at maximum load, about 2.5 to 3 times more than an LCAC, which carries around 65 tons. Oh yeah, that's great. At full scale, U-Hack would stretch roughly 84 feet long, stand up to 34 feet tall, and feature over 2,500 square feet of deck space. 
allowing it to move directly from ship to shore and across obstacles like 10-foot seawalls with its track system. Developed by the U.S. Marine Corps War Fighting Lab in partnership with ONR and Navitech, the half-scale demonstrator managed speeds of four to five knots on water while traveling over mud, sand, and marshland. Although the U-Hack was never built as a full-scale vehicle or adopted into Marine Corps inventory, and the prototype was eventually scrapped. The concept served as a powerful proof of principle. Estimates suggest a full-scale U-Hax would cost less than half as much as an LCAC in both build and life cycle costs, though no official per unit price was released. The amphibious assault vehicles, or AAVs, are essential to the Marine Corps' ability to launch attacks from sea to shore. They cruise at eight knots in water and shift seamlessly to land, reaching speeds of 45 miles per hour, thanks to a retractable bow plane that keeps the front end from diving beneath the surface. Operations begin inside the well deck of an amphibious transport dock or landing helicopter dock. Fully loaded with battle-ready Marines, the AAVs plunge into the ocean by driving straight off the ship's ramp. Once in the water, AAVs move in coordinated formations weaving through obstacles while maintaining a line-of-breast pattern to minimize vulnerability to enemy fire. After dropping off Marines ashore, they return to the ship for another run. This cycle continues until every Marine is inserted or extracted, sustaining momentum on the beachhead. Although introduced in 1972, the AAV fleet has grown increasingly difficult to maintain, despite multiple rounds of modernization. AAVs undergo regular maintenance and repairs in the cramped industrial guts of amphibious ships, a routine reality for crews operating at sea. Repair crews diagnose issues and perform fixes using onboard workshops or call in support from facilities on land. Ultimately, every repair and check is in service of one goal, readiness for real combat. Inside the well deck, Every movement follows a tightly choreographed routine. Positioning beacons, colored vests, and hand signals replace verbal commands to maintain silent coordination. Amphibious operations remain some of the most complex and high-risk missions in modern warfare. demanding seamless coordination between sea and land forces. If you're enjoying this content, make sure to subscribe for more videos like this.